first, your reaction to this flight making its way out of Kabul, 200 Americans on it. You know, it's kind of like everything having to do with the withdrawal and the evacuation, Stephanie. It's a little bit of good news, but this is not a good news story. The bigger story is that there are as many as 100 Americans still left behind. There could be hundreds of thousands of Afghan allies left behind, and, and flights haven't left in 10 days. So the debacle in Afghanistan, I think, continues to unfold, and many back here in America feel, feel like the Afghanistan war is over. It's not over for the Afghan people. It's not over for our allies. It's not over for the veterans back home like Zach and so many others that are working to get people out and resettle people here at home. So it's the week of 9-11. We're going to say never forget. I think we have to remember never to forget what's happening in Afghanistan right now because it's about our core American values. And in many ways, it's been the great American betrayal of Afghanistan and of our American values and of the compact that veterans like me and Zach and so many others made with those people on the ground. Zach, you and I spoke about 10 days ago, and you were working on getting a private chartered flight out of Afghanistan. What happened? They're still there. Uh, we're still trying to get them out. Um, in fact, it's two flights. Uh, there's a lot of folks, you know, that have stepped up to the plate, a lot of different organizations, a lot of different ad hoc groups that are trying to get people out of Afghanistan. Uh, and there's no planning. There's no structure in place. Um, and so we're still working on it. And uh, these groups include U.S. citizens that were not able to get out. I think Anthony Blinken, in the run-up to this segment, said it best. You know, he said, we're trying to do everything in our power. Um, I hope—I don't think we are trying to do everything in our power. If we are, I think that's a serious indictment of our status as a superpower, that we're not able to get people out of Afghanistan, in particular, U.S. citizens and those that did so much serving by our side over the last two decades of war. So the people you are trying to get out who have been waiting the last few days, are they safe? What's going on with those who are left behind? Yeah, I, I'm not going to talk so much about uh, where they are or who they are or if they're safe or not. Um, you know, the fact is, is people are not safe. It's why we are trying to get them out. Um, and there has been no planning in place uh, by the U.S. government for this effort. In many uh, cases, the U.S. government has been the greatest barrier. There was a story that came out a couple of weeks ago. There's a quote in it that, you know, we as a country are capable of individual heroics. And I think that is something we have seen over the last couple of weeks. Heroism on the ground from our troops, from our civil servants, heroism from groups of veterans and civil servants that have stepped up to the plate trying to network and get people out who they don't want to leave behind. But we as a country are no longer capable of doing big, heroic things. And I think that's what we're seeing play out in Afghanistan as we're leaving so many people behind. Gentlemen, let's, sh let's shift gears and talk 9-11. Paul, I know you were out there right after it happened, trying to help recover people, bodies from ground zero. 20 years later, you said it. We always say we'll never forget. But what does that mean to you and other first responders? What do you remember and what do you want us to? You know, 20 years went by pretty fast, and, and, sure but did. I think every time around around this time of year, it's really hard for the people that were there because we were so adversely impacted, personally connected. We never forget every day. We think about the people we lost. We think about the people impacted, and then we think about the people who are struggling right now with the long-term health impacts. That's one part of never forget is, is recognizing that 9-11 first responders and survivors, kids who went to Stuyvesant High School, people who lived in the area, are still struggling with adverse health effects. Just yesterday, we lost another first responder to 9-11 health impacts. So never forget really means understanding it's not over, whether it's it's in, in, in ground zero, whether it's, it's, it's in Afghanistan, whether it's our forever war. This is all interconnected, and never forgetting also means staying connected to what's happening and understanding that foreign policy and domestic policy have never been more closely impacted. But this weekend, if you want to do something to help, there are ways to help. You can support 9-11 first responders. There's a tremendous FDNY, NYPD hockey game going on tonight at Madison Square Garden. But you can also honor our values by helping Zach and all the other veterans who are resettling our allies. That's a true part of remembering what America is all about, remembering the power of our unity and truly never forgetting. Zach, what are your thoughts on this? You know, I agree with Paul. Um, you know, it means never leaving anyone behind. It means never forgetting. I mean, that's literally what it means. I think it also means when you look to the future, or look to the present, how you choose to live your life, the difference and the impact that you want to have. Uh, one of the most important lessons I had as a young kid, I lost a very close friend, an older brother figure in a traffic, in a, in a car accident. And at his funeral, the rabbi said to us, uh, we have now an obligation to live our life for John. So for those that we lost on 9-11, uh, for those that we have lost in the wars uh, that followed, 
Uh, we have an obligation to live our lives as individuals, as veterans, as Americans, uh, to honor their sac sacrifice, uh, to make it mean something and be worthy of their sacrifice. And that's something I think that we should all think about, not just on 9-11, but uh, every day.